We are going to do our warm up and we're going to do a little bit of exponent review in the warm up. I'm also going to look at the topics for our test, which we'll be taking tomorrow. We are going to look at comparing linear and exponential again, and then we're going to do an activity with the King's chessboard. We're going to compare exponential growth and decay, and then we'll have, it's not really a traditional quiz like we have been having, it's more of an exit question, but I do have a close where we're going to talk about that. These are the GLEs we're working on. I can evaluate and write numerical expressions involving integer exponents. That's all the exponent rules. I can translate among tabu tabular, graphical, algebraic representations of function. You know, that's where you have a table, you have the algebra form, you have the graph, and you go back and forth between all of that. The scatter plot, that's where we put our data in. Remember the L1, the L2, and we got the formula for that. That's what that is. Uh, identify domain and range. I'm going to ask you to think about domain and range on the exponentials today. And then these are our other standards. I can distinguish between situations that can be modeled with linear functions and exponentials, and I can construct linear and exponential functions. Homework. You do have a test tomorrow, so you should take home your notes and review for that. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to find a real life example of an exponential function and a linear function in a word problem format. Okay? A real life example in a word problem format. So write that down so you'll remember what your homework is. Okay, you notice I put a link up there. If you're going to need some extra help, you might want to write that link down for later so you can review it. And I'll scroll it up just a little bit in a few minutes. What's the, what's the rule for that if they have the same base? You have a multiply. Okay, think about what the rule is. Do you have it in your notes? Uh, remember we did some yesterday. Do you remember, Ethan? Uh, put the uh, like terms as one, and then you just add the two. That's right. That's right. He's right. So the x's, I just make ones? Well, you've got an x and a 2 minus x and a 2, so it's an x minus an x. What's that going to turn out to be? Um, Zero. Okay, and then you have a 2 and a 2. What's that going to turn out to be? Four. It turns out to be 3 to the 4th power. 3 to the 4th power. Good job. And you can completely do that one because you can do 3 to the 4th power. Okay. So go to the next step. You put it up there. You've got to think about what's a rule. That is an application of that rule. If you have the same base, what do you do with the exponents? You add. You add. Okay, so if you're going to add an x and a 2 minus x and a 2, what are you going to get? When you're adding an x, an x minus 2 and a 2. So what happens? Or a 2 minus x, right? 2 minus x. <coughs> Might want to write that down. If you write it down, you can see it. That's the website that has all the exponent rules on it. If you need to reference that, it also tells me how to do the operations with those exponents, how to divide, how to multiply. Disagreement. Are we having a disagreement about number one? No. no. Number four. Oh. Number four. I feel like I'm right and they're wrong. <laughs> they say otherwise. We'll find out. All right, I'm going to start working. You should now have that green pen in your hand. Now remember, you've got a test tomorrow, so if you're having trouble with these exponent rules, you really need to be paying attention and writing down the rules as we go. On this one, I'm looking to see which one of these has the greater value for the given value of x, so I'm going to put in this value. That's input-output, so I have 4 squared and I have 2 to the 4. What does 4 squared equal? 16. 16. What does 2 to the 4 16. equal? 16. 16. So what did you put for your answer? They're, They're the same. same. That was a trick question. Yeah. Evaluate, that's one of the skills we've been working on, evaluate the function for the given domain. I'm saying my domain, I'm just going to use x equals 4 and then I'm going to graph it. So where does the 4 go? Where the x is. Where the x is. So 100.3 to the 4th power. You get 80. I got point 80. Yeah. Point 80. Point 81. Point 81. So f of x equals point 81, which is also my output. And did y'all graph it? Yes. What's it look like? Like, better never touch the x. And what do we call that? An exponential function. An exponential function. function. It's an exponential function. Can you get the domain and range off of that? Yes. What's the domain going to be if I graph that? It's going to be like domain is. Looks like this? Mm -hmm. That means it's going to be like. Maybe it's, going to be it's zero to. Is eight. it crossing over here? Yeah. Okay, so it starts over here, right? So it's going to be zero 
Z zero to infinity. Infinity is correct. But uh, parentheses. Yes. <coughs> what about the range? It's going to be zero to nowhere. Can it actually be zero? Can it a can it actually I get it was zero? zero? No. No. No is right. So it is zero with the parentheses. And what's it going to? Infinity. 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 Good job. So it's zero to infinity. I'm both. Okay, the only real difference in those is I can have zero as my domain on that function. I cannot have zero as my range, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger on the y and bigger and bigger and bigger on the x. This student said that x to the fifth plus x to the fifth equals x to the tenth. The other one said that x to the fifth plus x to the fifth equals 2x to the fifth. Only one of those is correct. Second Which one. one is it? Second one. The first one. You've got to add this one. But I thought I'm it was adding this. Bases yeah, because here. it's I'm not adding. I said the second one because it was not multiplying. That's exactly correct. It is the second one. Pat yourselves on the back. A lot of you got that one. If I'm adding, I'm dealing with like terms. They're both alike, so I have two of them. I have two x to the fifth. If I'm multiplying up here, I have the same base and I'm dealing with the exponents. That's the difference. And you do have to look to see that that's the case. Yesterday we talked about a decay model. And we talked about how these numbers affect that. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. And we also talked about this general form for the exponential functions where we have y equals abx. And then I asked you to compare. <coughs> and here's what I want you to think about because sometimes we get confused about linear and exponentials because they kind of look alike. I want you to talk about at your group how, what a linear function is, what an exponential function is, how they're the same, and how they're different. And that's what you have in front of you. And I'm going to give you three minutes to do that at the We said that a linear function is, a, a linear function is, has a constant rate of change. Right. And it's a straight line. An exponential function is, it ain't, it don't have a constant rate of change, and it's got a curve in the line. Okay, that's true. Okay, and you've got here that they're same this way, and this is a really good answer. Is there anything else that would them both be in functions they might have? Uh, the graphs. You could graph them. That's true. They both. Um, well, just think about functions. Think about all the things that a function has. How would you know if something's a function from a graph? Like well, the line check. Right. What's that called? Do you remember? Uh. The, um. The line thing where like you draw it down. If it's like. You can only it can only hit it once. Right. Vertical line test. That's it. Vertical line test. So they would both pass that, right? What about that thing where you go up and go across? You know? Oh, the Talking triangle. The, Make a triangle. That would be slope. And linear does have slope, but does an exponential have slope? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but wouldn't you be able to tell since it would be a different one each and every time? But that is what would separate. That could be a them, because difference. Slope Linear functions have slope. That could be a difference. Like linear, you can, has a slope. Not exponential, don't have a slope. That's a good answer. That's definitely a difference. Played chess. Who I'm has who good. has played I'm chess in here? Chess. Anybody a chess, chess. player? I played checkers. I played chess. Anybody I really good at chess? Okay. No good at checkers. <laughs> All right. Right now we're going to talk about chess. We're going to teach you how to play. Can you ever wonder where the game came from? Chinese. No. Nice. Chinese yeah. China. Games, yeah. Everything. In the old days with the dragons and stuff, oh, maybe. People have to with too many rules that it's really complicated to do. Really so you think that the queens and the kings and the knights and the pawns and all that stuff actually had a purpose? Yes. yes. Mathematics. Maybe. I think so too. Okay, this particular website, if you'd like to write this down, I do not want you to go there right now. But you might want to hear the rest of the story later. So this is a website that actually talks about this particular folklore. And it's a folklore, so I, can nev I can't confirm nor deny it. It's kind of in the legend category on how chess actually came to be, and it's actually pretty interesting. So if you want to write that website down, because when you get done today, if you have a few moments, you might want to go read the rest of the story, because I'm not going to read the rest of the story. Wait, can I write it down? Yes, you may write it down real quick. And then we're going to do, do an activity in your table groups. And I'm going to put up there exactly what I want you to do. And I want you to be sure to be focused on math. I'm listening for math talk as you're doing this particular activity. 
We're talking about exponential functions. Yesterday we talked about exponential decay. So what do you think we might talk about today? Exponential gain. Exponential growth. Indian folk tale. According to this particular story, King Shiram was a tyrant who, oppo who oppressed his subjects. One of his subjects, a wise man named Sissa de Her, invented the game of chess <clears throat> for the king to play to show him that a king needed all of his subjects and should take good care of them. The king was so pleased that he ordered that the game of chess should be preserved in the temples and said that it was the best thing he knew of to train generals in the art of war, a glory to religion and the world, and the foundation of all justice. So the king asked Sissa <clears throat> what reward he wanted. Sissa answered that he didn't want any reward, but the king insisted. Finally, Sissa said that he would take this reward. The king should put one grain of wheat on the first square of a chessboard, two grains of wheat on the second square, four grains on the third square, eight grains on the fourth square, and so on, doubling the number of grains of wheat with each square. There are 64 squares on a chessboard. So here's the question. How many grains of wheat will Sissa receive for the 64th square? That's the question you're going to try to answer. How many grains of wheat will Sissa receive for the 64th square? But we are going, <coughs> we're going to do it with rice. So in your table groups, you're going to choose one person to be your resource manager. That's the only person that can get up. And you are going to go over there and you're going to get a checkerboard, graph paper, a bag of rice, and a ruler. And you're going to choose someone to watch your time. And you're going to choose someone to be the creative person, the person who's going to draw your table and draw your graph and all of that. <laughs> then what you're going to do is you're going to model this request. You're going to create the table with the grains. You have to decide on independent and dependent. You're going to sketch it. Determine what kind of relationship it is. And use your calculator to generate the equation. Ms. Wood, we've got all the way. Now, at least get the pattern. So you've got to get the answer to the question. So, you've got to have a pattern. You've got to do a pattern. I ain't grabbing all that. I ain't grabbing all that. All right, just work. Sixteen. Okay, so it looks like the rate of change is going up. Okay, when, you're, when you're saying rate of change, you're not thinking linear, are you? Okay, so rate of change is really more like a growth factor or a decay factor. So you just want to graph that? Okay, you can graph that. Okay, so you're going to want to do over one, one over two, up. How are you getting over here? Somebody making a table? Four or three. You make a table. Make a table. You make a table. And you cut a graph. Four or eight. You don't have to go all the way up. As long as you get basically, it's going to almost be an exponential because it's going to come and it's just going to stay. Yeah, but you, it'll never touch it. It'll never touch it. It'll never touch it. It'll be a prince in front of zero. So it'll be like zero. So it's one plus two plus two plus two. Yeah. I know it's close. It's close. No, it'll be the bracket around the zero because it touches zero. Well, you keep on that point. Well, you can't be exponential. Yeah, it's okay. I thought if it touches the zero, it can't be exponential. The domain is a... In the range, Would it be a bracket? Whatever it's on, uh, it's on the range, it never touches the zero. Put in this one. Yeah. Okay, so do you have to with this? Yeah, because you don't have to. All you do is get the pattern. But I don't know. It looks like it's... <laughs> it's going to curve back because you go to zero squares, you're going to have zero pieces of rocks. Yeah. The only thing I have to do is okay, you start at zero, then you have zero. One, one, two, three, four, three. So how do you relate the X to the Y? Take them on. 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 Take them on.
We go to edit, edit, enter data in the columns. So we have one through sixty four, and then we have to figure out all the numbers. So, so do you necessarily need to do all the way through sixty four? Uh, I mean, you could, but do you need to? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, that. I think her is a lot harder than ours. I just filmed the equation. She needs to do it by cracking all that stuff. Are you clear to do it? Seven plus seven. Then it would be 32, right? <laughs> That's so stupid. You can figure it out. It's like they did the same thing we did. I'm not going to go one at a time. That would be four, eight, I'm going to orange it over here. And that's what comes out. Twenty. I'm not recounting that. Okay, you've got eleven minutes. Pay attention to your time. You've got to generate a graph. You have to get some table. We only got eleven minutes. Okay. This last flu bite. You didn't learn it. Flu bite. Make sure you're paying attention to the questions up on the smart board. Those are questions I want you to answer. Okay, we're going to have to work off that stat table first if you're going to do a scatter plot. Okay, so what do I need to put in my L1? One, two, three, four, five, all the way down. Right, and what are you going to put in the L2s? Well, I mean, one, two, three, four, five is already there. I don't know what to do. I would get rid of the, one, the negatives. I don't know what to do with the negatives. Um, enter, enter, put it all in there. It won't let me clear. There shouldn't be flashing right there. Hit enter on that. Okay, now hit zoom nine. You've got everything. Okay, it won't clear. Zoom nine. Okay, good, Devin. Now what? What's next? You do. How are you going to get there? Because you're going to need an equation. Do you remember how to get the equation? That's the step right there. What's that mean? Let me see. Yeah. We talked about this yesterday. Yes, we did. It means exponents. It does mean exponents. So it's putting it in what form? Wait. See? Okay, so y equals a times b to the x power. So that'd be 0. 0.5 times b to the x. Look right there. Let's see if we all okay. came up with the same thing. Who has the answer? We know how many grains of wheat we're talking about in 64. Yeah, here's what I want you to do. I want one person from your group to come up here on the dry erase and write your number. Let's talk about it. Five. Four. Different answers. And I'm not really sure why we did get all different answers. That means that either somebody um, did the math part wrong, if you did it by hand, or if you put it in your calculator and did it, which most of you did do, there's got to be something wrong in the in the, the stats. How many stats? Thumbs up, thumbs down. I can work with those exponents. Thumbs up, thumbs down. All right, put your hands down. I can translate among tabular, graphical, and algebraic representations of functions. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Okay, you've got to choose one. You can either do it or you're not sure about it. All right, next, I can create a scatter plot from a set of data and determine if it's linear or nonlinear. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Good. I can identify domain and range. You do domain and range. If you can, thumbs up. If you can't, thumbs down. All right, good. I can distinguish between situations that could be modeled with linear functions and exponential. You could tell the difference. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. 
all right? And I can construct linear and exponential functions. I can graph those things. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Can you graph them? Can you graph a linear function? Can you graph an exponential function? Good. All right, look back at me. 